everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, episode number 186. Larry here, and I'm finally home. Uh, yeah, welcome home. Anthony here, who has always been home. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, my, my uh, arduous uh, trips uh, are now over. Uh, I was okay. uh, out of the Matrix and um, until my uh, new green screen shows up next week. So, <laughs> I, um, uh, yep, and uh, that's when I retire. <laughs> can't wait for this thing to show up so uh we're gonna do a little bit of a shorter episode this week just kind of give everyone a heads up though you probably yeah. will notice that when you see the time stamp uh on the episode but uh me and Aunt got you know it's just some things going on but we still wanted to bring something to all of you yes absolutely and it, for a weekend that you know we're all supposed to be staying home obviously because of the current climate and whatnot uh, I, we were both kind of surprisingly busy, so uh, we're kind of getting this <laughs> yeah. episode in under the wire. We we kind of are, yes, admittedly, because uh, as soon as this is done, throwing a beginning on it, throwing an end on it, and throwing it up <laughs> for tomorrow. Well, I don't want to say that we're throwing it up. Well, no. That just sounds, no. That just sounds great. We're vomiting this episode there on the go. internet. That's what we're trying to go. do. Uh, mm-hmm. So let's get right into it. Um, well, first, let's talk about um, you finally picked up some some of these game cases you know we talked about how i have some where are they so they're behind me directly uh some yeah. game cases from customgamecases.com. um i went genesis because those are the games so far but you went mm-hmm. and i'm dying to see what these look like yeah. um for the n64 yeah i went nintendo 64 because um with the way i have my shelves organized with all of my games most majority of my genesis game, uh, games already have cases mm-hmm. and all of my other games like um Super Nintendo and my and NES games and stuff like that. You know how the labels are on the side or the top or whatever, so that when you stack your games, you can still read the labels. Yes. The biggest problem with Nintendo 64 games has always been that you can't read the label because it's only on the front of the cartridge and you can't organize them on a shelf properly like that. So I thought, let me start getting cases for the N64 so I can actually see, you know, what I have. You know what's funny? Um, uh, back then, I don't think I've, I don't think that ever bothered me originally that there was no end labels. I don't know why. But, it just well, I mean, it it didn't necessarily bother me either because I would just kind of flip through. Yeah, them. exactly. But you know, but now that I'm kind of a collector, you know, now oh, no, now collect, it's different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now that I collect games, and you know me, I'm a stickler. I love getting the original <laughs> packaging. Um, you know, it just bothers me that these I have a bunch of games sitting on a shelf and I have no idea what they are because I can't look at the labels right away. I have to pull them all out and like kind of sit through them, even though I have, a, I have them alphabetically that way. Mm-hmm. It's still a pain. So, so I went in 64, um, reached out to custom game cases. I think I ordered them maybe a month ago. Um, so it took them about like, took them about three to four weeks, mm-hmm. but that's also because they give you an option. You can order the clear game cases or the gray ones. Now I wanted the gray ones because it just seemed to make sense. Yeah, I agree. Nintendo, you know, yeah. um, and, and so they showed up last week and I have to say super impressed. With okay. Let's like. take a look. So, so I'm only going to show two. Um, but first up, it, I'm going to show obviously the iconic Ooh. super Mario 64. Let, now, let me ask you this. I, we're looking at it right now on YouTube, um, and yes. you can check it out on YouTube at Retro Gamers Podcast. Let me. Add, I want to know first of all your reaction when you saw that laser printing, laser cut. Well, mm-hmm. not cut, but laser printed cover. Because when I first saw it on on the Genesis carts, it blew yeah. my mind. No, no, no. It's absolutely amazing. And by the way, I'll post images of these mm-hmm. also on our page, so keep an eye out for them. Um, I was amazed by it because it, and with the shape and everything like that, it reminds me of the old N64 box. It's not that different in terms of shape. And they actually give oh, yeah. you the option. Yeah. They actually give you the option to um, print the labels um, horizontally or vertically mm-hmm. if you want. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, I went horizontal because that's the way oh, that's a good call. the boxes used to look. So Very good call. Yeah. So... Uh, the printing is really good. The color is sharp. Everything looks good. It looks just like the box. Now, granted, you know, because it's a case, it's a plastic case. So the um, the art is, you know, it's a printout and slipped into the case. So it's almost like a case when, you, you know, way back when, when you used to rent a game from a video store. You know how they have those plastic <laughs> cases? That's, yes, that's, that's kind right of what it's that. like. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> like you, you grab the case off of the shelf. Yep. But anyway, so looks really good. 
Um, and they, they have the spine art and they have the back and on the back, it has, it's, it's a printout of the original box. So they have the, um, you know, they have all of the images of the game that were on the original box art. They have the, the, the summary of the game, mm-hmm. uh, all the bullet points, the Nintendo label, the, the barcode, everything. Like, they covered yeah. it all. Oh, yeah. And yeah, so, they just printed it right up. But beautiful. Yeah. Now, when you open it up, which I'm going to do, <laughs> uh, again, on the left side, there is a space for the instruction booklets, which, by the way, Somewhere hiding in my closet in a bin somewhere. I still have some instruction really? booklets for oh, my man. N64 games. I, I've i just been like kind of carrying them around with me. <laughs> um, I just have to track <laughs> them down because now I can put them in the cases. Yes. And then obviously there's a slot for the actual cartridge mm-hmm. and up top a slot for the a memory card. And and I, I figured there'd be a slot for the memory card, but you are showing right now one of the uh, third-party memory cards that's a little bigger than yeah. the Nintendo uh, memory mm-hmm. cards, which were about half the size. So kudos to custom game cases for making it where it would fit those larger memory yeah. cards. Yeah, because if you can see, uh, I mean, if you're watching on YouTube, obviously they have like the little the little pieces that keep the cartridge in place, mm-hmm. and you'll notice they have them in specific places so they'll fit the smaller cards. Yeah, which is very really cool. cool. And then the uh, but and then the last thing that I thought was really interesting, and I actually thought when I popped the game in that something was wrong with it at first. Uh-oh. You'll notice that it's kind of loose in. Oh, it is a little. The pack. It weeble wobbles. Yeah, and even the game also because they have um, when you when you look at it off of the back. Um, they have it set up so it does pop out from the back. Oh, so it's easy. So look it's at easier that. To re- it's easier to remove Wait, the Genesis cartridge. Have that? Yeah, it's easier to remove the cartridge from the case because it's out. I'm checking my so Genesis it's actually, ones. It's actually clever. It's very clever. Very clever. No, Genesis ones are just traditional, the, the two clips, the two yeah, clips no, on one, the side. This one just, you can pop them right out because of the fact that oh, they're, they're, they come off. Right? I like that a so, lot. Yeah, so that's really cool. So very happy with that. The other one that I wanted to show, of course, was going to be one of my favorite games of all time, which is Legend of Zelda Ocarina. Beauty. Looks very, very beautiful. And the only reason why I'm pointing out Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is because I learned something new uh, Uh this weekend. You were today years old? I was, no, no, no. I was, well, I was today years old when I realized my Ocarina of Time game is missing. Oh, like completely. Like no, my cartridge. I don't know. You where can't my find your is. cartridge. Oh, that's I not good. I can't. I cannot find my cartridge for Ocarina of Time. Uh-oh. And uh, yes, I'm. I'm very worried. Wow, it has uh, gone missing. Are you? Sh- it's got to be in a bin somewhere. No, I mean, well, I mean, I'm gonna check. I haven't checked all my bins and stuff. But I also realized <laughs> I this is all my bins. This, this also, this also isn't the only game I'm missing because one of the other um, uh, game cases I bought was. Um, WCW NWO World Tour, and that one's not around. So a couple of my games are missing. I gotta go. I gotta go do some digging. Um, <laughs> Maybe you should have did your inventory before you started ordering these cases. Well, no, I mean because I, I mean I know I own Ocarina of Time. No. <laughs> well, apparently I mean, not. I've, I've never. No, I do. It's just <laughs> it's just missing. I'll go on an archaeological dig in my closet one day and see if I can find them along Let- with the. Uh, along with the uh, instruction booklets. But anyway, the bottom line is I bought, I think, 13 or 14 cases. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I, I didn't realize you bought that. No, that's cool. I Trust yeah. me. Because I wanted to test it out and since uh, – well, not so much test it out, but I knew that they were at least going to be good because they were going to be printed. Mm-hmm. Now that I have, like, half of my collection – in cases, I will be filling. I will be getting the rest done. Awesome, because I have you know I still have like another twenty and sixty four games that are just in use. <laughs> I would love all of these right here. I mean, these are uh, Super Nintendo mm-hmm. games. They yep. do have some, I think, for Famicom and Super Famicom. Well, maybe not Famicom, but I think some for Super Famicom. But I would love to start getting these. And my NES games are over here on my other shoulder mm-hmm. uh, behind me. I would love to get all of them in cases. I know. Obviously, I won't be able to fit the same number back on the right. shelves. But let me ask you a question. Just curious. Um, the N64 game case, is it roughly the same size as an N64 box? Uh, I believe it is, actually, because this is this is essentially what it is. It looks it. Yeah, it's about the same size. It does look about the I same I should have size. grabbed one of my nah, boxes to compare I just thought size, of it now, but, so don't worry about Yeah, it. but I think, I think it's pretty much the same size. Okay. But I will say this. I did have to rearrange my um, my shelves in order to accommodate these bad boys because they're big. But worth it. 
Absolutely worth it. Oh, no, it. totally. Yeah. Totally worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally worth it. So I check. No complaints here at all. Check out customgamecases.com. Mm-hmm. And um, tell them the Retro Gamers sent you. They, they don't know who we are, and it's not going to save you any money, but it gets our name out there. So. Yeah. <laughs> they'll just be like, who are the Retro Gamers? And then they'll just like file us. <laughs> We're going to charge you double now. Exactly. Um, another quick thing I want to get into, uh, before, uh, we kind of have a bigger story to, to discuss. Um, so actually let's do this. I, I'm working on the, we're working on the fly here. Forgive me. Let's talk about some news that might be coming out soon. And I know you were telling me about some maybe rumors or some news mm-hmm. cause then we can wrap up with the other thing, um, that we're going to talk about. Sounds so. good. Yeah. Uh, well, the first the first bit of news was actually that um, Sony Sony had announced last week that there was going to be uh, a big announcement regarding the PS5 on Thursday, June fourth. Mm-hmm. So we were all gearing up for that, but uh, they announced today. Uh, well, this drops tomorrow, but they announced uh, on Monday mm-hmm. that uh, they were going to postpone it because of other things, obviously going on in the world. Um, so we're going to, I'm curious to see what they have to say about the PS5. Uh, there were some rumblings about what was going to be exactly backwards compatible on it, or if okay. they were going to announce, or if they were going to make the pre-order announcement, mm-hmm. um, and stuff like that. So, uh, so we're going to wait and see what Sony has to say, uh, or when the announcement is going to be made now since it's been postponed. So that was okay. interesting. All right. The second thing, and this is the one that's really got me excited because, um, we haven't really heard much from Sega outside of, you know, them, you know, obviously they had the Sonic movie earlier this year. They licensed their, they licensed their games out to other platforms. Mm-hmm. But last week there was a um, reporter for a Japanese magazine um, who basically came out and said that he's not allowed to say what the details are, but he got permission. <laughs> he got permission from Sega to say that, he interviewed them for an exclusive announcement that will be dropping in their um, their magazine on Thursday, June fourth. So, okay, what, and we don't know what it is. All he said he said something to the effect of, "It's big news that's going to affect the video game industry." So, as soon as as soon as this came out, there were a, a ton of rumblings going on about what it could possibly be. Yeah, it's about as vague and, as vague can be. Yeah, exactly. But but there were two things there were two there were two things people seem to be zeroing in on. Obviously don't know which one uh, which one is true if either of them are true. Yeah. But the the first one was that um, Sega might be announcing a partnership with Microsoft hmm. um, because Microsoft, for those of you who do not know, the Xbox isn't very popular in Japan. It actually doesn't do well. Um, the, the systems that do well in Japan are Nintendo and Sony. Mm-hmm. So read, and Microsoft is an import, obviously, for yeah. because it comes from the American company. So the Xbox actually does not perform very well in Japan. So the first thing, the first rumor that was going around was that Microsoft is partnering with Sega of Japan in order to get, you know, to get their sales. Oh, I gotcha. In, I gotcha. in other words, yeah. like, if say, in other words, yeah. So if, if it's like. A, if it's the Sega Xbox or Sega Microsoft partnership with the Xbox, they're hoping that Sega, you know, Sega of Japan will be able to increase the sales numbers. Mm-hmm, now, mm-hmm. for those of you who do not know, in Japan, Sega is still a really big deal. So when you go around, um, when I used to travel for work there to Osaka and Tokyo and stuff, um, there are Sega arcades all over yes. the place. And when I say arcades, I'm talking like multi-level buildings. Mm-hmm. With just all that's all Sega owns, Sega arcades. Um, you know, and they think about you know any Sega games or anything like that, you can play them there, which is really cool. Um, so Sega's a big deal in Japan. They're very, uh, they're they're still very very popular. So Microsoft teaming up with them for the Xbox for the next Xbox launch would be a big deal for them because they would be competitive in a, a huge video game market that they haven't been. In. Like a like a eight K Sonic the Hedgehog five video game exclusive on the Xbox Series X. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, something like that. And then basically, they're going to give you a treadmill because you'll be signed. Ba- that's the VR. Um, that's where we're heading. Off you go, right? Yeah. Um, the second rumor that came out, and this is the one that is really appealing to me. Mm-hmm. But as appealing as it is to me, it's uh, I'm also equally as uh, pessimistic. Trepidation. About it for okay. Do. 
Uh, yeah, maybe a little pessimistic or trepidatious. Whatever. Trepidation is the word of the day. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so the second, the second yes. uh, phone number's on the back of my license plate. I'll never forget <laughs> that line for as long as I live. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, wrestling aside. So the second, the second rumor from Sega is that they are going to announce the Sega Dreamcast 2 console. Ooh. See? Oh, okay. Ooh. Uh, hmm. Right? What's your immediate reaction to that? Too late. Like, it's too... It's like, you know, it's like Men in Black 3 or uh, Indiana Jones 4. Like, is there too far of a gap between between consoles? And don't get me wrong, I'm not dismissing it. I'm just well, immediately thinking of some, you know, Well, concerns. I mean, here, here's my... Here's my okay. Uh, here's my gut response to that. Um, Atari VCS in television Amico. Mm -hmm. So other companies are starting to come back with video game consoles because, you know, video, the video game market is booming. Mm -hmm. It just is Uh, with the current situation in the world. It's booming even more. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously they couldn't predict that it was going to be doing that, but you know, the bottom (laughs) line is I go there, you know, it's, it's, it's growing at an exponential rate. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm my reaction to it wasn't necessarily that it's too late. My reaction to it was, well, if they're going against, if they're going to be aiming for current market consoles, like we want to compete with PlayStation Five, Xbox, uh, Xbox Scarlet, whatever, whatever the hell they're going to call that, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series X. Oh, they need to get their name straight. <laughs> uh, I hate, I hate all of their names. Then what? Xbox Series X, PS Five, and the Nintendo Switch. If they're going to compete with them, yes. That's where the pessimism comes in because I'm like, I don't know if they're going to be able to take a chunk out of that market mm-hmm. for themselves. That's that's my assessment. However, my love for the Dreamcast is just unf- you know what I mean. Like, oh, it's it's amazing. Yeah, the Dreamcast was one of the best. I'm sorry, one of the best systems mm-hmm. that came out at the Agreed. time. Agreed. Came out. Um, it just yeah, it just didn't have the support it needed to be ultimately successful. So um, I would love to see them take another stab at it, but I would love to see them do it. In the way Atari VCS or the Intellivision Amico are going, where it's like you are going to get some new games and they, the graphics are going to be awesome, but you're also going to get a lot of retro. So, as well. so almost like it's a glorified mini that plugs in that that can hook up to the internet and down because most likely, I mean, odds are it's going to be digital download only because that's where everything's starting to head mm-hmm. to digital downloads. Um, like, I don't know, I just hear Dreamcast 2, and as much as the Dreamcast rocked, like you said, and I agree with you on everything you said, for 1999, when that Dreamcast came home, you were basically able to bring arcades home. Yeah. So that was a huge selling point. Nowadays, you can already do, and again, I'm just free thinking here, you can already, a lot of... You know, the systems now, you can download ar- arcades, uh, basically, as is. Uh, I got the Capcom Home Arcade, which has 16 just perfectly, uh, you know, uh, emulated uh, arcade games. And not only that, but nowadays there aren't really a lot of new arcade games to come mm-hmm. out. Like, in the 99 2000, there were still brand new arcade games coming out where you can now go, I want that on the Dreamcast. But with that being said, also, I agree that, yeah, if they don't, if they do that, they don't focus on Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, but they focus, like you said, on television, on Atari, Polymega, Hyperkin, you know, any of those with these clone systems or these newer systems that are focusing on older games, and then that may be the the switch to go with. Um I like the idea. Obviously, we don't know what the rumor is going to be. We'll find out when we find out. But that'd be interesting. I'm not cra- – as much as I love the Dreamcast, I'm just not keen on the name. I know. I know it's kind of a placeholder at this point, but um, – Yeah, I don't, think they would, I don't think they would call it the Dreamcast, too. I think – I think <laughs> Dreamcast I think, dose. Yeah, I think with the rumor – I think with the rumor that it's going to be the next console from Sega and the last one they had was a Dreamcast that people were yeah. just saying. Dreamcast I get it. Too. I get it. Um, all right. Well, that'd be interesting to see Sega back in the home console, uh, in the home console market because yeah, they, 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 they did good. So we'll, uh, we'll see. I'm just trying to, 
trying to think what their niche could be to be different enough. Uh, I know I heard a rumor, not a rumor, but I heard that I know Sega is working on a new Sonic, but like they're going to take their time with this one. They're not well, going to rush it could, out. And, and that could be the announcement too. True. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. Sonic Mania rocks. Yeah. I don't know how long that was in development, but that game is fantastic. Uh, but like to get like a Sonic Fox, because remember there was a Sonic the Hedgehog four. It was weird, yep. but there was a Sonic four. Um, but uh, yeah, so them focusing on Sonic and because of the movie and the, they announced there's going to be yep. a sequel to the movie. Yep, we got that announcement uh, last late last week too. So now more than ever, Sega can get back out there. Sonic can get back out there and kind of take o- try and take over the world again. So. Great ideas. We'll see what happens. I I would love to lean towards another console, but at the same time, I got now three waiting to come in between the Intellivision, the the Atari, and the Polymega. So I'm I have again run out of room, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, I just have the uh, the Polymega. <laughs> yeah. So I'm good. I'm good. So, between right. that and the 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 uh, the new Mini that I got last yes. week. Yes. And and before we move on to that one, uh, folks, if you're listening, if you're watching in the comments below on the Instagram page, on the Twitter page, on the Facebook page, let us hear your ideas, your thoughts, what these Sega rumors are. You know, let's uh, what would you love to see come out by from Sega? And uh, we'll see who's on the mark and who's way off. So, uh, but yeah, we're going to wrap this up. Like I said, we're going to keep this one short, but I think in the mini uh, home department, I think we found the new King of the Hill. Did we? I think so, personally. Okay. So uh, we finally got, uh, as we thought they were going to be coming out in January, but actually came out last week, the North American TurboGrafx-16 Mini. Yes, and wow, am I impressed. <laughs> no, 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 really. Wow, am I impressed. Yep. I yep. was actually very, very impressed. And, and that's again, coming from was- Anthony. Yes, we, we not all know that uh, between between the two of us, we know the, we know who the bigger critic is here. Oh, okay, absolutely. <laughs> there's no, I mean, there's no contest. But I have to say, like, just from um, you know, and last week, if you were watching last Tuesday, um, I decided to do an unboxing of it on on our Facebook page, mm-hmm. facebook.com slash Retro Gamers Podcast, um, and I did an unboxing, and then I tried out some of the games on it. Just from the unboxing alone, like um, I had never owned a TurboGrafx sixteen. Yeah, so this, was exci- this was exciting in its own right, just to be able to to, to have. Did you know anyone with a TurboGrafx growing up? I think I knew one person. Me who too. Had it, but I never played it. Everyone I ask always literally says yeah. I knew one person who had it. Yeah. Apparently, well, you're, what, only one was allowed every certain of blocks, I guess. In a yeah, race. exactly. Like one per block in normal. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I had never had the opportunity to actually physically play it. Okay. Um, so, so. Oh, so you was, never touched one even. I didn't realize no. that. No, no, never played. Oh, see, I got, I played my buddies when I was at his house, but okay. All right. Now I got you. Okay. Yeah. So never played one. So obviously got the opportunity then, uh, took this out, played the games. And I have to say, um, I don't know if it was the marketing back then for uh, TurboGrafx or whatever. Like, I don't know where they misstepped. Oh, I think whatever misstep they made. Marketing Um, big time. Yeah. Marketing. It's usually the marketing. Or lack thereof. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it could have been they just didn't put enough money into it. But I, this was a system I would have loved as a kid. <laughs> like the game, the game, the games on it are great. They're fluid. They're vibrant. Now, granted, obviously, they've been remade for the the mini. But just the, just the just the fun factor mm-hmm. in these games are fantastic. Now, do I think that there's a little more? Um, it's a little heavy on one genre than others in terms of uh, uh, um, side-scrolling shooters. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of those on there, but they do vary enough to make them interesting. That was the system because even now, though Konami put it out, Hudson is the original owner. Uh, Hudson, Hudson Soft. I don't want to say Hudson. Soft. No, I was gonna. I, I stopped myself because I don't. I can't guarantee that Hudson Soft was the. Right. Publisher who put out the Turbo Graphics, but they were heavy on the Turbo Graphics 16. Ton yeah. of their games. Adventure Island, uh, the, sh- yes. the various shoot 'em up. And Adventure Island, I love. 
Um, yeah, Adventure Island is a blast. I mean, I, I played a little bit of that. Like, that was the whole thing. I just wanted to play random games. Mm-hmm. Um, Adventure Island was a blast. Bonk's Adventure. Oh, wow. That game is so much fun. And you never really played that is. before? No. Wow. No, this is all new. Because it did come out on the NES. Bonk. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, and that I never played Bonk on the NES. <laughs> I don't remember so, it coming out. Adventure Island I played. On yeah, that was, there was a few of them on, on Game Boy but and I, Nintendo. But still, on the Trouble Graphics, you know... Um, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts is fun. Um, uh, some of the I, I tried a few of the side uh, uh, the side scrolling shooters. Now they're not normally my favorite. I like them, but mm-hmm. they're not like I don't run to them. Yeah, but Blazing Lasers. Yes, like I need to go back and play that. That game was like manic. I couldn't <laughs> keep track of what was going on on the screen. But it was just so much fun. I, I have this. To... Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say jumped over to the Japanese side because they don't you love how that switches. It, the switching is great. <laughs> the background changes are great. Like they do everything yep. so so. Well. And even though there are games on the the PC Engine side that I'll never be able to play because they are in Japanese. Yeah, that's a little weird. Which is unfortunate, but but still, um, it's just great to see that they have that option because at the end of the day, I think there are like fifty seven games. Something on Something like that. Yeah, yeah there's a few fifty seven. Um, but one of the and if you ever if you ever look up lists of like. Um, either underrated games or best games you've never played types of things. Cause I'm always looking for stuff. That's like, what would be like an equivalent to a Zelda game? That's yeah. really awesome. Um, for the turbo graphic 16, it always shows up on every list. Newtopia. Yes. Um, and Newtopia is on the mini. So I cannot wait to get my hands on <laughs> Newtopia. Like I don't want to start it now because I'm still working on a bunch of other games. I'm like, but new to- like I've got my eye on that game. I'm really right. looking forward to playing that. I love when you start a game, the animation of putting the hue card in or, yes. or even just he- hearing the, the whirl, the, the whir mm-hmm. of the CD spin yeah. up and then start to slow down. When I first heard that and saw that, I flipped out because I'd gotten the PC engine first, the mini, yes. uh, thinking it was going to be forever turbo graphic. Um, but, uh, from me actually playing some of these games originally, like Bonk, like, um, Moto Rotor, like Splatterhouse. My buddy had Splatterhouse. Mm-hmm. These, the, the as fluid as they are today, that is not just because of emulation. They were fluid back then. Yep. They didn't look as crisp, but they were definitely fluid. Yep. Um, as a fan of the shoot 'em up genre, I don't understand how I didn't own a Turbo Graphics, but I, to be fair, I kind of fell in love with that genre a little later in life. But yep. this mini definitely owns to it. Um, the uh, I love. Did you did you go through the different um, um, the different displays that you can play it on? I didn't go through. You them, didn't go. But I th- saw the options there. Yeah, one of them is a Turbo Express, which is amazing because I mean it shrinks the screen down. Don't get me wrong; it's very uncomfortable oh, to play. Boy. But you get you, the Turbo Express was just the Turbo Graphic handheld. You literally used yeah, the same it was, game. It was a tiny little thing. Um, but the games work out perfectly. Uh, there's a version. I even re- I actually stumbled across it yesterday. Uh, Ninja Gaiden is on the Japanese side. Yep. Um, very odd version. Not odd, just because we're used to the NES version. Uh, but a, a very nice version of, of Ninja Gaiden. But yeah, those games on there are phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, because of the PC Engine, I'm now up to three controllers for the Turbo Graphics. And of course, if I get the, I can get the five player multi tap eventually. Um, oh wait, I got one, two, three. And actually, I originally ordered a, an extra controller that's going to be shipping any day now. So I'm actually going to have four. So now you ask yourself, how not counting the one that's shipping? If I have a PC engine and a Turbo Graphics Mini, how would I have three controllers when each one only came with one? Do the math. Do the math. Uh, no. So, had the PC Engine. This is before the Turbo Graphics showed up. Been yeah. playing the PC Engine, loved it. Uh, so my buddy, Mario, he's been on the show a couple times, lives downstairs. So I'm like, yeah, all right, let me head downstairs, you know, we're gonna grab something to eat, uh, bring down PC Engine, we'll, we'll play some games. So I bring the Mini downstairs, um, and he has a, he has a RetroPie. And we spoke about emulators or whatever, but he has a RetroPie. And the, the RetroPie plug is a, a USB mini, but the other end of it is a straight-up two-prong wall outlet. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a USB on the other side. It's it's an actual plug. 
So, um, so I unplugged that. I also had my, my PlayStation Mini with me because I wanted to show them the classic as well. So I plugged that in. We're playing some of the PlayStation. Unplug it. Plug the PC Engine Mini in with that, with that uh, power outlet. Boots up perfectly. But the controller doesn't work. So I'm like, that's weird. I thought he broke my controller. So, so I'm like, oh, man, you broke my controller. And um, so now we're futzing around with it. You know, the USB felt loose. I'm like, what the hell happened? I only went downstairs two floors. How? What broke? Turns out that if you use the wrong input power supply, you can bust that PC Engine Mini. Apparently... The plug that was you that I used was more power, had more juice in it, and I don't know why I did it, but when I looked it up online and all the message boards said the exact same thing. I used the AC plug for a RetroPie, I plugged it into the PC Engine Mini, and it disabled the controller. Wow. But like nothing flashed on the screen. Like it just killed it. It just stopped it. It was the oddest thing. So now I'm like seething because I'm like, this is a terrible design flaw. And I'm like, all right, let me exchange the Turbo Graphics. Well, I bought it from Amazon Japan. And it's not Amazon's fault that the machine didn't work. It was my fault. So I would have to pay for the shipping to send it back, which when I did the calculation came out to like $140. Through DHL, because that's like you would send it through DHL. Right. That's how I got it. I'm like, that's not happening, because I'm not even going to risk. Dude, even if they sent me a refund, I'm still not going to risk it. Yeah. So I just went and bought another PC Engine Mini. (laughs) So it was a lot cheaper. Why why do these things always happen to you? I don't know. And here's here's the best part. The controller worked. It wasn't the controller that broke. It was something the in console. the PC Engine Mini. that. Bro- and I even tried, like, when I finally got the North American Turbo Graphic, I tried that controller. That mm-hmm. didn't work. Just something. It is the weirdest thing in the world. Wow. So I promptly threw the original PC Engine into the garbage. It is somewhere on a Long Island landfill as we speak. And I got my new one sitting in the box. But I got a wonderful controller with it. You should have hung on to it. Uh, I actually wanted to take it apart. Yeah, that's what I mean. I would have taken it apart, but I, or I would have just like put it on a shelf for, for show, show and tell. <laughs> no, because then I keep confusing it with the other PC Engine Mini. I'd be like, why doesn't this work again? <laughs> yeah, I the amount of stuff I've thrown out. Oh, I know. Retro Freak. I know. The Retro Freak, which there was no reason to throw that out. Yeah, it would have cost me money. <laughs> I got that. Old. Did I get that imported? I did get that imported. Yeah, from uh, from yeah. the UK. I think. I think Play Asia or something. Yeah. No, no, no. Play Asia is where I got it from. I think you ordered it from the UK. Maybe I did order from the UK because you paid you paid a lot more than I did. Uh you usually the case. Yeah. You picked it up in person. Yes, I did. So I don't want to hear about it. It costs you a flight. <laughs> no, I had to pay for it in the store. I, didn't I meant like steal shipping. It. I meant like shipping. I know, but and I could have gotten you one too. I think I couldn't want to, want to wait that long. <laughs> well, look, you know what? One day you will learn your lesson. <laughs> but now I got a- that between that the, the hundred dollars you flushed on the PlayStation Classic, the, the PC <laughs> hey, Engine trash. That PlayStation Classic is worth every dollar. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. And now I have a hundred dollar PC Engine controller. <laughs> That's how I see it. Well, I have a high end. Congrats- Congratulations. Oh, can I also point out, since we're talking about the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, uh, I would like to say kudos to them for creating a uh, like at least a six-foot cable on the controller. Oh, yeah, that's Very one, helpful. right? Holy yeah. Lord. Very helpful. Very long cable. Because the Nintendo yep. one, I had to buy an extended. Oh, yeah. I had to buy an extended. Even on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, I know. Uh, just too damn short. And they were. So, it was terrible. So uh, good. Yeah, TurboGrafx-16, big plus. All right. Uh, really enjoying well, it, and uh, can't wait to play some more. I'm, I had no. I honestly thought you at least played a little bit of the TurboGrafx back in the day. So I'm happy to hear that you love it, and you. This is literally the first time you're playing a lot of these games. Yeah, so. with the. I think I honestly think with the exception of Splatterhouse and uh, maybe mm-hmm. Ghouls and Ghosts, everything on there is new to me. Sweet, awesome. And uh, with that, we're actually going to wrap this one up. We said it was a handheld episode, so we're going to keep this one short. And, uh, Ant, where can they find us? Uh, you guys can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Retro Gamers Podcast, on Instagram at Retro Gamers Podcast. 
Uh, Twitter is at RetroGamersPod, mm-hmm. right? Yep. You can email us at email at theretrogamers.com or you can go to our website, theretrogamers.com for some basic info on uh, on who we are and what we do. But since you're already listening and watching to us, you pretty much get the gist. Simple enough. All right. What and this? That was, I think I think that was it. And we're uh, not on or, TikTok well, yet. Ha ha. Well, I mean, you're listening or watching, but you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube if you prefer watching. Um, we, I don't know why you want to watch us, but hey, it's a few. Uh, <laughs> also, you know, if you want, please leave us those five star ratings uh, or good reviews on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to us. Uh, the ratings and the reviews always help us, and we're very grateful uh, for them. So, uh, yes. Yeah, I think All right, cool. So, uh, Ant, enjoy those game cases. Good luck finding, uh, let us know where Ocarina of Time is. Yeah, I may do. Maybe I'll do like a short documentary as I like scour through my <laughs> my closet. Because let me tell you something: it's not it's no easy feat. <laughs> no, it really I've been isn't. there. I've seen it. Yeah, you got well, a lot I, of stuff and, in there. And, yes, I do, and I have since reorganized it all. So it's like even. <laughs> yeah. What's it? What was that game on NES? Spelunker. That's basically what I'm going to be doing. Oh, Spel- Spelunker was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> Just don't be Pitfall Harry. <laughs> no, no, I definitely don't want to do it. No, there are no crocodiles. I don't think. <laughs> just, I, uh, just two cats to get in your way. <laughs> yeah, just two cats. I'm going to like, slice my face off. <laughs> and with that, folks, we will catch you right here next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast. Thank you.